Hello dear grade 6 children. Today you all are with me to learn the fourth lesson of the science textbook that is energy in day-to-day -day life. You all know that we have to do a lot of activities, a lot of work in our day-to-day -day life. We need to have a lot of energy to do those work. So under this lesson we are going to learn why do we need energy, what are the different ways that we get energy from. Right. We will see what are the topics that we have to learn under this lesson. So under this lesson, we are going to learn about one main topic, energy sources and their applications. So under energy sources, we are going to learn the things or the ways that we get different types of energies are known as sources of energy or energy sources. And under the applications, we are going to learn what are the different ways that we can use different types of energies. So let's get started. Right, look at this picture children. What is this picture about? Events of the Singhala Hindu New Year festival and a procession. So you must have seen these type of activities. Some of you must have been to these processions and Singhala Hindu New Year festivals. So what are these different types of events children? So remember, some of these activities are coming under Singhala Hindu New Year festival and some other activities are coming under the procession. For example, Asala procession. Okay children. So first of all, what you have to do is you have to write down what are these activities. So what are the activities that are coming under Nivya festival and what are the activities that are coming under the procession. So you can include them in a table like this. So first of all, you all have to start to do this activity and after you complete this one, you can watch how I explain this one. Okay, right. So you all start to do this activity. Okay, children. So look at the first activity. This is tug of war. So you can see tug of war in New Year festivals. Remember, not only in New Year festivals, you must have seen these type of activities, a tug of war activity in your sports meets as well. Okay. Uh, who is this person? This is a whip cracker. So whip cracker or cracking the whips, that event is the first uh, first event coming under the procession. So this is an activity coming under processions. Okay. Look at this child. This child is blindfolded. What is he going to do? And what is this activity? This activity is breaking the pots. Right. So this child has to break this pot uh, while he's blindfolded. Okay. So what is this person doing? She is scraping coconut. Okay. So these activities even in day to day life when we have to cook we have to scrape coconuts. But remember this activity is coming under Singhala Hindu New Year festivals. And even these uh, breaking the pot item also coming under Singhala Hindu New Year festivals. Right. Look at this activity children. This is a very famous activity we can see in New Year festivals. What is this? This is pillow fight. Okay. So what about this activity? This is known as uh, climbing the greasy pole. Now this pole is very slippery because grease is applied on this pole. However, these people they have to climb, climb this pole and they have to take off this flag. Most of the time this activity is done as a group activity, as a teamwork. Okay. So we discussed about the whip cracker. Who is this person? This is a dancer. These type of uh, dancing items are known as Kavari dance. Right. So this is a Kavari dancer. And look at this person. So you all can see he's rotating this uh, wheel with fireballs. This is a fireball acrobat. So you can see uh, these type of fire, fireball acrobats also. You can see in processions. Okay. So is this person, this is a drummer. So whip crackers, kavadi dancers, fireball acrobats and drummers can be seen in processions. So I'm sure you must have done the activity correctly. Now I'm going to uh, divide these different activities in our table, right? We will do that now. 
So Nibia festival, the first one was tug of war. And breaking the pots, breaking the pots, coconut scraping, coconut scraping, pillow fight. And finally, climbing the greasy ball. Climbing the greasy ball. Climbing the greasy ball. So for New Year festivals, okay? Right. So here, procession. We are going to mention these four different types of people under procession. Okay. With cracker. Dancer or Kavadi dancer. Kavadi dancer. Fireball acrobat, and drummers, or candy and drummers. Okay, so under procession, we wrote these four different types of people with cracker, cavalry dancer, fireball acrobat, and drummer. Right, so here. Tug of war, breaking the pots, coconut scraping, pillow fight, and climbing the greasy ball coming under New Year festival. So, under each of these activities, when we uh, focus on these different instances, you all know that some type of work has done. The drummer plays the drum. Playing the drum is a type of work that we can do. Right? So, tug of war, what are the things that we do? Two teams, they have to pull this rope to either side. That is, pulling a rope is also a type of work. Okay, children. So, each instance, a certain type of work or certain amount of work is done. So, now when it comes to these two instances, these are not day-to-day -day activities. These are special instances. Okay, so, uh, Nivea Festival and Procession are counted as uh, special instances. But even in our day-to-day -day activities, we have to do different types of work. We'll see what are those types of work. Right. So let's go through this. Some work is done in all the above activities. This is about the procession and the New Year festival. Right. We have to do work in our day-to-day -day life too. So children, what are the activities that you have to engage in? What are the types of work that you have to do from morning to night? Let's write down them. So when you, after you wake up, you have to brush your teeth, wash your face and to have a wash and then you have to get dressed, right? And then you have to go to school. All these things are coming under types of work, right? So let's write some of them, right? So when you go to work, you have to walk. We will write walking is a type of work, right? Pulling a table, pulling a table or pulling a desk, right? Lifting a chair. If your teacher asks you to go to a different place, sometimes you have to take your chair as well. So in that case, you have to lift your chair, right? So we will write lifting a chair, Lifting a chair. So during the interval at school, you can uh, play uh, different games, right? So you have to run and you have to throw the ball, etc. Okay, we will write throwing a ball, throwing a ball, 
right? What about writing? Writing is also a type of work. Writing, right? So if you look at your day-to-day -day activities, every single time you have to engage in different types of activities and these are known as work done, okay? So walking, pulling a desk, lifting a chair, throwing a ball, writing and many other activities that you engage in. Not only you, if you look at your uh, family members, your mother, father, they may engage in different other types of work, right? So these are the uh, types of work that uh, as children you engage in, okay? But when you look at the other people, they may engage in different set of activities or work. So remember, in order to engage in these different, different types of activities, what do we need? Our body needs a lot of energy. Just imagine when you are sick, when you don't have enough energy, can you do these type of activities as normal days? It's very difficult, right? That is because we feel lifeless. We feel like we don't have enough energy to do our day-to-day -day activities. Okay, children? So let's see that. So energy is needed to do any activity. We can't do any activity without energy. So energy you need in different, different amounts. You, if you want to run fast, you need a lot of energy. But if you want to just lift your hand like this, move your hand like this, right? If you want to write something, you don't have, you don't need that much of energy, right? So you need a lot of energy to run fast, but if you want to move your hand or if you want to write something, you don't need that much of energy. That's why I said you need energy based on the activity, based on the work you engage in, you need energy in different, different amounts. Okay, children. So what is this energy? Let's go through this. Energy is defined as the ability to do work, right? This is very important. Energy is defined as the ability to do work, right? But do you need to do any type of work? As I mentioned you, without energy, can you do any of these activities? You cannot engage in any activity, any work without energy. Therefore, we can define energy as the ability to do work. If you can do work, it means you have energy. How do we get energy? Just think hard because we did how to get energy, how to produce energy in your body in the first lesson. Do you remember under respiration, we learned that respiration is the method that your body produces energy. So how, do, how does our body produce energy, children? Do you remember? Uh, we learn under respiration that respiration means production of energy in your body by oxygen that you inhale reacting with the food you eat. Okay, children. So very briefly, we can give it like this. The food you eat reacts with the oxygen you inhale. Right? We inhale oxygen. So inside our body, this oxygen reacts with the food we eat. Okay, children. So then what is produced? When food and oxygen react with each other, energy is produced. Energy is produced. Right? So the main result is energy, but as an extra product, this is known as a byproduct or extra product, carbon dioxide gas is produced. Carbon dioxide gas is produced. Okay, children. So food reacts with the oxygen we inhale. You all know that we get oxygen by inhaling. We have to inhale oxygen. Okay? So, food reacts with the oxygen we inhale and it produces energy. So, this is how our body produces energy, children. Okay? 
and as a as an extra product as a secondary product carbon dioxide gas is also produced now this carbon dioxide gas should be removed from our body that is done by exhaling so we learn about this under the first lesson under respiration exhale okay children so this entire process is known as respiration so respiration means production of energy in your body by uh, food reacting with the oxygen we inhale okay children so this is the process of production of energy so what do we need to produce energy we have to eat food okay so this inhaling exhaling that automatically takes place right so we don't have to think and do that without our knowledge we inhale and exhale air okay but what about food we have to eat food that is why when you don't eat food you don't get enough energy to do your day-to-day -day activities if you are a picky eater if you skip your meals if you skip your breakfast you will realize that you can't engage in your day-to-day -day activities as before why does that happen children that is because without food your body cannot produce energy so if you cannot produce energy can you engage in your day-to-day -day activities right you cannot what happens if you don't have energy you can't engage in your day-to-day -day activities so in another way you can't do work right that is why it is said that energy is defined as the ability to do work we can't do any work without energy understand children so as i explained you before for certain activities you need only a very little amount of energy for example like moving your hand like blinking blinking your eyes also need some type of energy okay children a certain amount of energy is needed for blinking for talking right for writing so those are the activities you need less amount of energies but what about running fast jumping playing different games like throwing and catching the ball those type of activities you need a large amount of energy okay children so now we all know energy is needed to do any activity you can't do any activity without energy and you also know that energy is defined as the ability to do work and we all learned earlier energy is produced by the food reacting with oxygen in your body okay children right right children our next topic is use of energy to do work so we learn that to do any kind of work we need energy so our activity is let's make a wind propeller so by doing this activity we are going to uh, prove that wind energy the energy contained in wind can be used to do work okay right so what are the materials we need to do this activity we need some colored papers a4 sheets oil paper also can be used okay so uh, you need with different colors then it will look very beautiful we need a piece of wire and we need an empty pen tube or the barrel of a ballpoint pen and we need a uh, piece of cardboard you need to cut two circles out of that uh, piece of cardboard small circles okay and we need a pair of scissors we'll write down this colored paper colored paper and you need a thin wire a thin wire barrel of a pen barrel of a pen piece of cardboard you write cardboard and a pair of scissors okay colored paper thin wire 
few colored papers, right? Thin wire, uh, barrel of a pen, cardboard, a pair of scissors. We'll write colored paper sheets. Right. So we will see how to do this activity, our method. Now I'm sure most of you have made these type of propellers when you are in your primary school. Right. So we are going to do this activity again. Right. So number one, cut several pieces of colored papers into triangles like this. Okay. Same size should be used. And make two holes in each piece like this. We will just name them X and Y. So in each color, you have to make two holes at each side of the triangle as X and Y. Okay. Insert the wire into one hole of each paper and fix all pieces to the wire. First of all, you have to take the piece of wire and you have to insert the same side of all the uh, triangles, different colors we have to use. So you have to insert the same side. Let's say that you have to take the X side of the all the triangles. Okay. And after fixing the pieces, insert the rest of the holes into the wire to make the wind propeller. Now after, uh, after inserting the X side of all the papers, now you have to connect the Y side. You have to simply fold the paper and connect it again or insert it to the piece of wire. Okay, children. Right. Now, insert two small cardboard circles from top and bottom of the wire. So you have to make the propeller like this. You have to insert the triangles. It will look like this, like a flower. Right. So if the wire is like this, from the top and the bottom, you have to insert the small pieces of cardboards, like cardboard circles. Okay. And now bend the top edge of the propeller. So you have to take this top edge and you have to bend it as you make a loop. Right. Finally, fix the other end of the wire tightly to the barrel of the ball point pin. So this wire will not move here and there. You have to insert the barrel of the ballpoint pen and after that from this side you have to bend it again. I'm going to show you how to make this okay. Right. Finally fix the other end of the wire tightly to the barrel of the ballpoint pen. Then now hold it to the blowing wind and see what happens. You can take this uh, wind propeller after you making it and you can go out and you can run around. Okay children. So let's go and see how to make this wind propeller. Right children, now I'm going to show you how to make a wind propeller. What do you need to make a wind propeller? Here I have some paper triangles. You can use any number, maybe 6, 7, 8, 10, likewise you can use. And uh, you can choose with different colors, okay? And we need a wire and we need two cardboard circles and an empty pen tube. So how to make this one? First you have to take the wire. So you have to insert this wire through each paper like this. One by one you have to insert them carefully. So when you use different colors, it will look beautiful children. When you finish making it. Right, so we, we attach all the papers from one corner, one edge. Then you have to insert it from the other edge like this, again, one by one. So while you are making this one, you have to spread these papers as, as they don't go. Uh, into each other, okay, like a flower. Yeah. So now you have to insert these two cardboard circles from either side. 
on top and bottom of the wire. And you have to bend the top of the wire. You can use a plier for this one. And after that, you have to arrange pieces of the propeller like this. And from the bottom of this one, you have to insert the empty pen tube. And from here, you have to bend. Right, children? So we are done with the propeller. Now remember, it's better if you can attach, if you can paste these each uh, adjacent pieces with glue so that it will not go here and there. So I have previously prepared propeller. So here you all can see I have pasted each piece with glue. Okay. Right. So we'll check whether this works now. Now you all can go out with this type of propeller and you can go around, run around and play with this. But at the moment I don't have been present in the lab. Therefore, I am going to use this hair dryer. Let's see. Right. So, how does this wind propeller work, children? With the help of the wind. So, wind has a certain amount of energy. With the use of this energy stored in the wind, we can make this rotate. I hope this is very clear now. Okay, children. Did you see the activity? I am sure you must have made your own wind propeller. So did you observe what happens? So I did not have inside the lab, I did not have the wind. Therefore, by directing a hair dryer, I send a uh, blowing air, right? Uh, so what happened then? The wind propeller rotates. When I direct that air from this uh, hair dryer, the wind propeller rotates. But I am sure you must have gone out and done this activity. Uh, with the presence of real wind. We will write the observations. The wind propeller rotates. The wind propeller. The wind propeller rotates. When there is when there is wind. The wind propeller rotates when there is wind. So what will happen with the speed of the wind? When the speed of the wind is higher, this propeller will rotate faster. Okay children, so the wind propeller rotates when there is wind. We will write the other one as well. When the wind speed increases, when the wind speed or speed of the wind increases, increases, the propeller rotates faster. Okay children, the wind propeller rotates when there is wind, when the wind speed increases, the propeller rotates faster. So what is the conclusion? Why did we do this activity, children? I told you that we are going to prove that we can do work with energy. Okay, children. So here, children, rotation of the rotation of this propeller is also considered as a type of work. So where did this propeller get energy in order to rotate? with the help of the energy given by the wind. Okay, children. So it's very clear when it comes to the conclusion, the energy needed for the rotation of the propeller was given by the wind. Okay, children. So it's very clear, wind has a certain type of energy. Understand? Let's write. Rotation of the 
Wind propeller is considered as a task. As a task or work. The energy required the energy required to do this task was provided by provided by wind. Understand children? Rotation of the wind propeller is considered as a task or work. The energy required to do this task was provided by wind. So it's very clear that wind has energy stored in it. Okay children? So that energy stored in the wind can be used to do activities. Understand that? Okay, children, look at this picture. Let's focus on a solar thermal stove or cooker. So what is this solar th thermal cooker or solar thermal stove, children? You must have seen, some, some of you must have seen these type of solar thermal cookers at least in pictures. So remember, this is a large cooker that uh, in some countries people use these type of cookers uh, uh, in outdoor activities, in outdoor cooking, right? In beach areas and even in their home gardens, sometimes you can use these type of cookers. So how do we cook food using these type of cookers, children? If you look at this one, you can't see this is not connected to any kind of uh, fuel source. Now, when we cook at home, most of the time we use uh, either electricity or LP gas, okay? So when we uh, cook food using rice cooker and other uh, electrical cookers, we, we use electricity. Uh, or on the other hand, uh, sometimes we use uh, LP gas. Most of the time we use LP gas, okay, to use, uh, you to cook food in the uh, gas cookers. But if you take a good look at this one, there's no any gas supply, there's no any electricity supply. So how can you cook food using the solar thermal cooker, children? Remember, this is a structure, this is an equipment with a curved shape, right? So the inside, this is actually a concave mirror, right? Concave means a certain surface which is curved inwards, right? So this is curved inwards. Now this is the inside. This is the outside and this is the inside. Okay children. So this inside, this inner surface is very shiny. It is a type of mirror. Okay, shiny like a mirror. You all know mirrors can reflect light. If you direct torch light onto a mirror, what will happen? It will reflect the light. Okay, so in the same way, if you place this solar thermal cooker outside, what will happen? It can reflect sunlight. When sunlight falls onto this special cooker, because it has shiny mirror-like walls, what will happen? The sun, sun's rays, this light rays will get reflected. Okay, so they all will get reflected to one point. So you can make another structure so that you can place a pot or uh, any other thing that you want to heat in that particular place where all the sunlight comes to the same place. So I told you the sunlight is reflected by the solar thermal cooker and this reflected light rays come to the same point. And that they, because all the light rays reflected by this solar thermal cooker is coming to the same point, that particular point is very hot. Temperature is very high at that point. So if you place your pot or any other instrument uh, on this pot, what will happen? You can easily heat something up using this place. Okay, children. So 
Look at this one, you can see here. A pot is placed in somewhere like this. That is the place where all the sun's rays, after reflecting all the sun's rays coming to that particular spot. Okay, children. So, you can cook food, you can heat water using these type of uh, solar thermal cookers or solar thermal stoves. So, most of the time, these type in Sri Lanka, most of the time we don't use these type of cookers, but in other countries, uh, they use these type of uh, cookers in outdoor activities, outdoor cooking activities. Okay, children. So, we are going to make a similar structure now. This is going to be an interesting activity. You all can do this activity at home. Okay, children. Let's see how to do this activity. Right. So, the activity is demonstrate the function of a solar thermal box or stop. Okay, children. So, to do this activity, what are the things we need? We need a cardboard, pair of scissors, binder glue, and we need a, a sheet of foil or any other silver color paper. And we need two beakers of the same size. We need a thermometer and we need some pieces of paper and a glass sheet. Okay. We will write down the cardboard. We need a pair of scissors, a pair of scissors, bind the glue, and a sheet of aluminium foil, sheet of aluminium foil. If you can't find aluminium foil, you can use a silver color paper. Sheet of aluminium foil. Two beakers. Two similar beakers. Two similar beakers. A thermometer. and sheets of paper and a sheet of glass and a sheet of glass okay a cardboard pair of scissors binder glue a sheet of aluminium foil two similar beakers, a thermometer, sheets of paper and a sheet of glass. Right. Let's see how to do this activity. Okay. Look at the method. It's given stepwise. Paste the aluminium foil on one side of the cardboard with binder gum. Okay. You have to paste the aluminium or the silver color paper on one side of the cardboard. Now these are the dimensions given. Right, length and width, 30 each. But you can change the size if you want, okay? Draw lines on the cardboard as shown in diagram A. Right, we will name this one as diagram A. This side I am going to name as diagram A and this one diagram B. Okay? Draw lines on the cardboard in these corners. As shown in diagram A and cut off the four shaded parts. Okay. So you have to cut off the shaded parts. You have to mark it like this. And you have to cut off the shaded parts. It means with the lines. Okay. Fold the parts of the cardboard and make a box as shown in diagram B. Now you have to fold these parts inwards. Okay children. And you have to make this box like this and you can use those uh, sheets of paper to uh, paste these corners. Understand? And paste the edges. And when you paste the edges, you have to make sure that aluminium foil side should go inside. Right? You have to make sure that silver color side is inside the box. Right? 
So paste the edges, the aluminium foil should go inside the box. Next one. Now we have completed making the box. Now we are going to use it as a solar thermal stove, right? So put 30 milliliters of water into each beaker. It means we have to use beakers of similar size and you have to pour water of similar amounts. Okay, 30 milliliters each would be fine. And put 30 milliliters of water into each beaker and record the temperature of water. So using the thermometer, you have to measure the initial temperatures of two beakers. Understand? And then keep the box at a place with good sunlight. And keep one beaker inside the box and the other outside the box. So you have to take this box to outside and you have to place it uh, somewhere uh, it gets uh, enough sunlight, good amount of sunlight. And you have to place one beaker inside the box, one beaker with, one beaker with water inside the box and the other water beaker outside the box. Right, but the same place. Understand? So close the box with the sheet of glass. You have to cover the box with the sheet of glass. Understand children? And remove the sheet of glass and measure the temperature of water in the two beakers after about 10-15 minutes. You have to leave the setup under sunlight for about 10 to 15 minutes and then you have to uh, measure the temperatures of two water beakers again. Right? So what do you have to do? Using these dimensions and using the given instructions, you have to make the uh, box like this, right? When you make the box, you have to make sure that the silver color side goes inside. And then you have to take two similar beakers and you have to put uh, equal amounts of water. And then you have to measure the initial temperatures of two beakers. Okay, so you will realize the temperatures are the same, initial temperatures are the same. Okay, and then you have to keep one beaker, you have to place one beaker inside the box and the other beaker outside the box in a place where this box gets enough sunlight. Right, and you have to cover the box with the sheet of glass. So after about 10-15 minutes, you have to measure the temperatures again. Now we are going to do this activity. Okay, children. Now we are going to study the function of the solar thermal box stove, right? So I explained you how to make this uh, stove using boards, okay? So here, this is not the correct size. You have to use, like I mentioned you, what are the dimensions. So you can use a cardboard and you can cover the cardboard with the foil paper or even you can use this type of board. Now this is a board. Uh, one side is silver color, the other side is normal color, right? So you can use either this type of board or cardboard covered with a foil paper. And then you have to cut that cardboard like this. Okay, so I already explained you what to do, what are the dimensions and dimensions and all. So you can go along with those measurements, right? And then you have to connect these pieces like this and connect them with tapes. Okay, children, so it looks like a box now, right? So here, this is the actual solar thermal box stove that we are going to use for this experiment. Look at this one. So inside is silver color, okay? So how to do this activity? I explained you, we need two equal size beakers and we need the same amounts of water. And first of all, we have to measure the initial temperature of this uh, two water samples. So I am going to measure the temperature now. Right children, so you all can see the temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. Okay, observe carefully. Now I am going to measure the temperature of the other water sample. So that is also the same children. Okay, now what do we have to do children? We have to place one of these water samples inside this 
solar thermal box towel the other water sample outside then we have to leave these two water samples under sunlight for about 15 minutes so remember you have to cover this box with this type of glass sheet okay so we are going to leave this under sunlight for about 15 minutes now we are going out to do that activity right children now we are go going to study the function of the solar thermal box top I already explained you how to make the solar thermal box top. We need a cardboard covered with an aluminium foil in order to uh, make the solar thermal box top. So here you can even use a cardboard one side silver color the other side white color something like this also can be used to solar thermal box top. Right children. So as I explained you you have to cut the edges like this and you will get a shape like this. Then you have to connect the corners or the edges like this and so from outside you have to paste the corners of this box using pieces of paper or even using tape. Okay children, however make sure the silver side should come inside. Right. Now I have already made solar thermal box top now. So what are we going to do now? We have to check whether how the solar thermal box top works. Right. In order to do that, we need two beakers, two equal size beakers with equal amounts of water. Here I have two beakers with about uh, 30 milliliters of water in each. Okay. And first of all, we are going to measure the initial temperature of these two beakers. Right. So we are going to use this thermometer. This is calibrated in Celsius degrees. Okay. We will measure the temperature. You all can see the temperature is 36 degrees Celsius. Now I am going to measure the temperature of the next beaker. Can you see children even in this beaker temperature is the same 36 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now what we are going to do children. Now we have two similar beakers with equal amounts of water. Now we have to place one of these beakers inside the solar thermal box top and the other one outside the solar thermal box top in the same place. And now I have to cover the solar thermal box top with a sheet of glass like this. And we have to leave it under sunlight for about 15 minutes. We will leave it under sunlight now. Okay. Now we left this setup exposed to sunlight for about 15 minutes. Now again we have to measure the temperatures of these two beakers separately. Let's do that now. I am going to remove this glass sheet. And first of all I am going to take it out. Now this is the beaker which we kept inside the solar thermal box top. We are going to measure the temperature of that beaker first. Now you all can see the temperature is increasing here. Can you see the thermometer children? Now the temperature of this water which we kept inside the solar thermal box stove is 45 degrees Celsius. Right children? Now we are going to measure the temperature of this water beaker which we kept outside. Observe carefully children. Okay, it's very clear here the temperature is about 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, here temperature is 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, the, in the beaker which we kept outside the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. So what has happened children? Initial temperatures in both the uh, water samples were the same. But here we kept both the beakers in the same place but we kept this beaker inside the solar thermal box stove and this beaker outside. Right children? And we left both the setups uh, for about 15 minutes exposed to sunlight. So in one beaker which we kept inside the solar thermal box stove is higher than the other one. So what is the conclusion that can be drawn after doing this experiment children? It's very clear inside the solar thermal box stove 
the temperature is higher than outside, that is because of the special arrangement of the solar thermal box stove or inside the solar thermal box stove. So, it is very clear that in order to heat water, in order to heat something up, we can use this type of solar thermal box stove. Right children, so you observed what happens and it was very clear after doing the activity. Uh, the temperature of the water beaker which kept inside the box was higher than that of the other water beaker. Okay, when we measured the temperature, initial temperatures were the same. But what happened? After about 15 minutes, we checked the uh, two setups. Uh, the water beaker which we kept inside the box had higher temperature than that of the other water beaker. Right? Let's write observation. Temperature of the water beaker the Temperature of the water beaker that kept inside the that kept inside the box inside the box the temperature of the water beaker that kept inside the box was higher than the in the water beak kept outside. Okay, children. The temperature of the water beaker that kept inside the box was higher than the water beaker kept outside. So, what is the conclusion? It is very clear. We use the same type of water beakers. The beaker, the size of the beakers was the same and even the amount of water we used was the same. And we use the same thermometer to measure the temperature. The only difference was the place we uh, kept those two beakers, right? One was kept inside the box and the other outside the box. So, it is very clear because of the special arrangement of this box that in environment inside the box gets heated up faster than the outside. Okay, children. So, let us write the conclusion. Due to the special arrangement, special arrangement of the solar thermal box top the beaker absorbs the beaker absorbs more heat more heat Okay, children, due to the special arrangement of the solar thermal box stove, the beaker absorbs more heat. So, this solar thermal box stove, at this moment, it acts as a solar thermal cooker. I explained you. So, when we use the solar thermal cooker, it can reflect the sunlight and it comes to the same point. All the reflected light rays come to the same point and then that place, the temperature is higher. Okay, children, the same process takes place when we use the solar thermal box stove as well. Understand, children? Right. So, the same description given here. The beaker inside the cooker absorbs more solar energy than the beaker kept outside due to the special arrangement of the cooker. Right. Therefore, the temperature of the beaker inside the box is higher than the beaker kept outside the box. So, this happens due to solar energy. 
So if we kept this inside without keeping it outside under sunlight, will we be able to observe this difference? We would not. We have we observed this one because we kept it outside. And uh, when you do this activity at home, children, you can do this at two different places. So before you take the solar thermal cooker uh, outside, you can keep it inside somewhere inside then you can do this activity and check whether there is a uh, difference between the temperatures after about 15 minutes. Okay, so you will realize there is no difference. It will be the same. You will realize that only when you keep the solar thermal cooker outside, you can see the differences of these temperatures. Understand children? So this happens due to solar energy. So it's very clear that sun also has a certain type of energy and this is known as solar energy. Right? We will read this part. Thermometers are used to measure the temperature. Temperature is measured in Celsius or Fahrenheit. So uh, in order to measure the temperature, we basically use these two uh, units, Celsius unit and Fahrenheit unit. Okay. Temperature is measured in Celsius or degree Celsius in day-to-day -day applications. Okay, children. But nowadays, when we use these digital thermometers, the same digital thermometer can be uh, used to measure in Celsius or Fahrenheit unit. We can change it as well. But when we consider the manual thermometers, they come as either Celsius or Fahrenheit. Understand? Right. Look at these four instances. Cooking food using a solar thermal stove cooker right solar thermal stove or solar thermal cooker now these are some uh, activities or tasks or in other way work that we have to do right drying of chilies and grains in day-to-day -day life we have to dry chilies or grains or sometimes we have to dry our clothes okay rotating a wind propeller and heating water in the above activity we made a solar thermal box stove and we did uh, water use in that one so this is about that activity. So what are the different types of energies we used under each activity, children? Now you all know that all these four things are coming under types of work. Okay. So we learned that to do any type of work, we need energy. So let's write down what are the types of energies we need to do these four different types of work. Help me to write this one, children. Right. So cooking food using solar thermal stove or solar thermal cooker. What is the type of energy we use? We use heat energy. But this is not just any heat energy. Heat energy given by the sun. Heat given by the sun. So this is known as solar energy. Okay. So we will write cooking food using solar thermal cooker. Here we use solar energy. Solar energy. Okay, and drying of chilies and grains. And another way, another example is drying of clothes. Again, you can use solar energy to dry chili, grains, and to dry clothes, right? You can use solar energy. Number three, rotating the wind propeller. Now, we did this activity as well. Here, in order to rotate the wind propeller, what is the type of uh, energy we used? We use the energy presenting wind. We can simply say wind energy. Okay. Wind energy. And finally, heating water in the above activity using that uh, solar thermal box stove that we made. So here also we use solar energy. Solar energy. Right? So cooking food using solar thermal cooker uses solar energy and drying of chilies and grains. That also in order to dry, heat has to be there. Therefore, we use the heat given by the sun, which means solar energy. And rotating a wind propeller, there we use the wind energy and heat in water in the above activity, the activity we uh, did before. Right? 
that is also solar energy. So it's very clear we can use different types of energies and these energies come from different different things or different different places. Now when it comes to the solar energy, right? Here solar energy, the heat energy basically, the heat given by the sun that is coming from the sun. The type of energy is heat. Where do we get that heat from? From the sun. Okay. So the energy uh, used to rotate this wind propeller is given from the wind. Okay, children. So it's very clear in our day-to-day -day activities, when we do work, we need to use energy. Without energy, we can't do any work. And at the same time, there are different things or different places that we get these energies from. Okay, children. Right. So things that provide energy are called energy sources or sources of energy. Okay, children. So the main thing we are going to, the main topic we are going to learn on this topic is the sources of energy or energy sources. Okay. So the things that provide energy, the things that provide energy are called energy sources. Right. So there are a large number of energy sources. We already discussed about two different types of sources of energy. What are the two sources that we discussed about? The sun or the solar energy. Right. And we discussed about the wind. Okay, children. So sun, wind. And you all know that we can use the energy present in water. You must have seen in hydropower plants, in order to rotate the turbines, we use the energy present in water, right? So that is another type of uh, source of energy that we can use. So energy present in, present in water, right? So under this lesson, we are going to discuss about a lot of topics. Some of these topics, uh, you must have heard of and you must have learned before. But some of the other topics are totally new to you all. Right? So another type of, another source of energy is nuclear energy. Nuclear energy. Okay? Another type of, another source of energy is uh, tidal waves. Or sea waves also another example. Tidal waves. Now under each topic, I am going to explain you what are the other things come. Right? We can get energy from tidal waves, sea waves. Now when it comes to tidal waves, tidal waves are not the normal sea waves. Under this topic, we are going to learn that there are two different types of tidal waves called the high tides and low tides. Okay? So tidal waves and another one is sea waves. Now, sea waves also contain a large amount of energy, children. These sea waves, the energy present in sea waves also uh, can be used to do our day-to-day -day activities, especially to uh, generate electricity. We can use these sea waves, tidal waves, we can use. Okay, children. And there is another source of energy called uh, biomass. Right? So under biomass, we are going to learn what are the plant and animal matter that can be used to generate energy. Okay, children. So I hope it's very clear now. We need energy to do our day-to-day -day activities. The ability to do work is known as energy. And when it comes to energy, the things that provide energy are called energy sources. And there are a number of energy sources or the number of things that uh, give us energy that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. Okay, children. Right. Okay, children. So examples of use of energy and respective energy source. Now here we have a table. So this side is the activity or the work done and the source of energy. Now the source of energy means the place or the things that give us energy. Okay. So you all have to do this activity before me and when I discuss the answers, you can check whether your answers are correct or not. Okay, children? Right. So the first activity, drying of chili. 
dry enough chili in order to dry something we need heat energy so what is the source of energy most of the time we dry chili using the sun's energy therefore the source of energy is sun right we will write here sun number two run in a vehicle in order to run a vehicle we need different types of fuel right what are the fuel we use we use basically petrol and diesel remember children when it comes to fuels there are many types of fuel there are something called fossil fuel fossil fuel is a type of source of energy now this petrol and diesel they are coming from this fossil fuel they are counted as fossil fuels right so we will write run in a vehicle fossil fuel fossil fuel example petrol and diesel petrol diesel okay so in the previous activity you can see examples under examples we did not write uh, as an example we did not write fossil fuels but that is also a type of energy source okay children right next one cooking a meal so in order to cook a meal what are the different sources of energy we use children uh, so at home most of the time we use lp gas or liquid petroleum gas it's a type of energy source now remember lp gas is also coming under fossil fuel when i discuss under each topic i'm going to explain y'all okay there are different different types of fossil fuel lp gas is also coming under fossil fuel what else can we use children so in order to cook a meal sometimes we can use electric cookers right so when it comes to electricity electricity is a type of energy what is the energy source that we get get electricity from so we can generate electricity using hydropower using the uh, energy contained in water okay children in hydropower plants electricity is generated using the energy of water okay children and uh, sometimes we can uh, cook a meal using in most of the time in rural areas when they don't have electricity when they don't have lp gas they can use firewood by burning firewood uh, those people can make a or cook a meal okay children so firewood is coming under biomass i explained you plant or animal matter that we can use to gain energy are known as biomass okay so firewood is also coming under biomass so let's write those examples cooking a meal sources of energy we will write fossil fuel the first type is fossil fuel so here we have to write not the energy but source of energy where we get it from so fossil fuel example lp gas and we can write uh, biomass biomass here example is firewood by burning firewood so example for biomass is firewood source of energy is biomass okay children right next one ironing clothes so in order to iron clothes we use electricity right electric irons are used but do you know about many years back when there was no electricity do you know how people iron their clothes they use a special type of irons called uh, coconut shell irons right so what they used was as the uh, source of energy they used coconut shells right so by burning coconut shells the coconut shell charcoal was produced and it gained a large amount of heat so there was this uh, part that you can open this iron and you can insert this coconut shell charcoal and so that iron gets heated up really well because of the heat of the coconut shell charcoal okay so there are two types of iron in some rural areas where there is no electricity they still use this type of irons that use coconut shell charcoal okay so we will write both the ways iron in clothes 
uh, electricity electricity but electricity is, uh, is actually an example you have to write there are different ways to generate electricity using hydropower using solar cells okay and uh, coconut shells coconut shells okay children and heating water in order to heat water what are the different sources of energy we can use we can use sun you all know that using solar thermal cookers you can heat water so there you use the sun's energy right you can use the sun or uh, you can use lp gas right which means fossil fuel okay fossil fuel there you can use lp gas and even electricity okay so there are many examples that you can write right under each point okay children so drying of chili running of away running a vehicle cooking a meal ironing clothes heating water they are all are counted as types of work that we do in our day-to-day -day life okay right now look at this picture children the same things that we discussed before given as pictures here these ladies they dry chilies you all can see it's an outdoor environment right in a large area they have spread chili so with the presence of sunlight they can uh, dry these chilies easily okay so running a vehicle using different types of fuel some vehicles use petrol and some other vehicles use diesel and i mentioned that petrol diesel both are coming under fossil fuels right and look at this one cooking food here in the first picture here the uh, here cooking food is done using firewood this is a firewood hearth okay children by burning firewood you can uh, generate you can produce a large amount of heat using that heat you can cook food right so i explained you that firewood is coming under biomass biomass is a uh, type of energy source okay and this one now here you can cook food using uh, gas cookers there you use the lp gas as the fuel and uh, these type of fuels lp gas petrol diesel these type of fuels are coming under fossil fuels again okay children look at this one uh, here i told you about that uh, special type of iron used by some people uh, where you can use these coconut shells right so this is that iron first iron is uh, very familiar uh, now this first iron is the electric iron this is the iron that you can uh, work with coconut shells okay children so by burning coconut shells you can open this top part and you can insert coconut shells and when you close it because of the heat this iron gets heated up really well okay children here heating water using uh, electric kettle okay right look at this one we already discussed about this this is a solar thermal cooker you can see the special shape the shape is known as a concave shape right so you can see uh, the inner side of this concave shape solar thermal cooker is very shiny just like a mirror okay children so you can see how a pot is placed in this particular place that is that particular place where after reflecting all the uh, sunlight gets collected okay children so it's very clear by looking at all these examples we need energy to do our day-to-day -day activities we can't do any activity without energy right so we get energy from different different types of energy sources i hope this part is very clear now